I keep forgetting my Saturn's a 4K. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> this thing prints off amazing models. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, the, like, you, you just printed off a whole bunch of yeah. minis for me <laughs> in resin, and they just look stunning. Uh, yeah. So, hum, what is it? Humblewood? So, Humblewood uh, is, is... Is it 5E? Yeah, it's 5E okay. compatible. It's its own own uh, uh, campaign universe setting yeah. of of you know woodland woodland creatures very red so wall. It re- it kind of reminds me of when I was looking in the store mm-hmm. at some of the animal type figures for Wizards of the Coast. Oh yeah, the quality is just as good, if not better. I was like, wow, these things are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And it, and it is that thing, um, like they do sell those yeah. models uh, in stores. Uh, but, I think Rick actually has some. Oh, does he? Yeah, I yeah. think he has some over on the shelf. Um, but uh, the uh, by backing uh, some of the, the Kickstarter projects yeah. that they have, they included the STL files, um, and so it's okay. just like, oh, well, I have access to <laughs> Rick Print. <laughs> all and, and that's just like the handpicked ones that I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be using these in my campaign sure. soon. I want them. Uh, but I mean, so in other words, I'm going to have some more to print. There's, <laughs> there's like eight different birds and there's eight different, uh, humble folk, yeah. the, the ones on the ground. And then, and then there's, uh, expansions where there's like another set of like two dozen minis or something. I immediately, when I, when I saw the print of the rooster, I was like, ah, Robin Hood. <laughs> It's like that's awesome. Lolly oodle lolly golly holiday. <laughs> With that, <laughs> yes. Welcome to Deads on the Podcast. I'm Brian and I'm Rick. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top. <laughs> talking about sci-fi stuff <laughs> going forward we promise we promise we just did we, we've had a lot of printing projects oh uh, man has the there been month. a lot of printing projects yeah so uh and, which kind of leads into that whole news thing it, right it leads really <laughs> succinctly into the news thing so why don't we start with that yes and we'll, we'll kind of work our way back uh into the 3d realm so obviously big, everybody knows everyone knows at this point but uh, what is Mantic Vault? So Mantic Vault, uh, this was because uh, I have no idea what it is. A new project that they <laughs> they teased for for a little bit uh, that we we we'd had inklings of uh, throughout, kind of like throughout last year into this year. Yeah, it's, it it been a slow drip. Uh, it was something I think they were really taking their time. They were thinking through it. Because I remember us having a conversation with Ronnie, with Ronnie a little over a year ago, yep, yep. and he wouldn't say anything, but yeah. he wouldn't say no. Right. It's like, hmm. Right. Look what's out. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're tiptoeing around. So Mantic Vault is Mantic's uh, proprietary 3D file. STL file. STL. Uh, almost like a Patreon, yes. essentially. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a Patreon. It's, it's just not on Patreon. It has its own kind of monthly subscription. Yep. It's separate from the companion subscription. But you get a discount. But you get a discount <laughs> if you have the companion. Uh, and I think it was pretty significant. It's yeah, like start. $3. Yeah. It's like, like that's what I'm paying for it. Yeah. For in the welcome, well, we'll do the welcome pack next. Yeah. For the first month, it's almost all of the uh All of the Basilians and I, I swear, Bas- I need Basilians? to hear someone say it. From Mantic Bastlands. because I've never I've never heard anybody <laughs> officially from Mantic say whether it's Basilians or Basilins or Basils Basil Basilians <laughs> Basilands but yes um, uh, all pretty much the entire fleet except for the XL ships yep the the really big ships aren't aren't included but you have all of them for the orcs and the Basils and <laughs> halflings are in there 
And halflings. There are right. halfling ships in there, there which I didn't ships. even realize that was a thing. I actually didn't really notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's halfling ships. <laughs> which is really cool. Like, I mean, that's a fairly, like in the grand scheme, it's a fairly new game. It's yes. like two years old. And then throw um, in, so was the scenery part of, that's part of the. Uh, the scenery is part of that pack. Is it part of the pack or yes. the welcome pack? I'm pretty sure it was part of the Armada stuff. Okay. Um, but, but that's crazy too. But that said, in the welcome pack, yes, you had a whole bunch of of half like it, it's um, half lane bits and bobs. Yep, upgrade pieces. Uh, up, upgrade pieces that they normally would print in resin. The giant upgrade piece. The giant upgrade piece to make a storm giant. Yeah, which is which, <laughs> nasty looking. Which is <laughs> funny because I have a giant sitting on my shelf that I haven't done anything with. Yeah. And then as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm gonna build my giant now. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's a, it's been a lot of fantasy stuff. Not gonna lie, a ton. Um, and 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 they are they are kind of in their their fantasy swing right well, now. Well, and it makes, but it, honestly, it makes sense. It does make because sense because Kings of War has a lot of units that this is perfect for. Right. Because there's all when you buy a mega army, when you buy even just a small starter or an ambush box, mm. th- all of those models have an upgrade ability. Yeah. For the Kings of War lists. And a lot of those are in resin, and you need a lot and of now them. now you can print them. <laughs> so it, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah. And, and again, with Armada being as hot as it is uh, right now, I think it's a big... Oh, yeah, it's perfect. That, and they, they uh, for those that are in kind of the sci-fi realm, they also did a, a digital game version of Armada. Yes. Uh, which you can go and play. On Warhol. Warhol. Right? Yep. Um, and so, I jumped on and I checked it out. Yeah, uh, I haven't actually played a game on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks neat, um, but you know it, it's it's hopefully kind of you know it's it's that sign of things to come. Yeah. Um, but for the the other things in the welcome pack, we weren't you know, we were completely <laughs> completely starved on the sci-fi. Side. We were, and I was super stoked. Like yes, when I opened up the vault uh-huh. and I'm looking at the month, I'm like cool, and then I saw the welcome pack and I'm like, oh my <laughs> nine oh one. <laughs> Subject nine hundred one. Subject nine hundred one. A it's medic. Normally a metal. Yeah. Mini. <laughs> yeah, and it's about the same size. Yeah. Because I have the you actual have... nine hundred one. Right. Now I have like four nine hundred ones. It's gonna have an army of them. Yeah. Um. But then you get a GCPS medic. A GCPS medic. And the medic is really cool. Yeah. The medic. So the medic model. Uh. I don't think has been. Uh. You don't have the the parts for it. In, in the kits um, currently in the sprues and whatnot, but what it what it has what it comes with is basically a GCPS Marine, but he has the little like injector uh, gun thing the thing that Kira that, had. That, yeah that Kira uh, from Star Saga Nikolovsky had um, you know which which was kind yeah, of glad you said a the big last medic name. <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't even say it right um, but then it also Basil. the guy also comes with. Uh, the little medical box that the Judwan medic has. Yes. So, like the actual medics, the, the couple <laughs> that exist, uh, all together are merged together. So I, I just really appreciated that that consistency yeah. throughout because it, it just it just makes it look very at home yes. uh, with, like with the fits. rest that's come out yeah. already. Um, but then you get which it, you and your GCPS are awesome. Yeah. But then you get goblin snipers. <laughs> The new Goblin Sniper. <laughs> I've printed so many of those. <laughs> Just because it's a gorgeous model. It is. It, and it's better than the existing Goblin Sniper. Yes. Uh, it looks very, very cool. It, it also looks very snipery. It does look like, very snipery. It's such a sweet looking model. It, and like the detail is insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, for 901, for the Medic, for the Goblin Sniper. I mean, these are gorgeous models. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super stoked for the months to come. And, and yes. it might only be one or two STLs right now for sci-fi. Yeah. But it opens such a big door because you have firefight mm-hmm. and you have vehicles. Yes. So there's this whole potential <laughs> for new weapons. <laughs> the GCPS Lancer tank. <laughs> yes, the Lancer tank. Finally make it on the field. Been, uh, but add-ons to the mule. Oh, yeah, Add-ons absolutely. to... Um, all of them. All, all of them. Cause, and like, your striders? The, the extra armor stuff that's being worked on. Yeah. Because that, that's that's one of the, like in the beta, 
Um, that's one of the things that was being added to the, a lot of the Forge Father vehicles is, is the option to have a lighter version of them and a heavier armor yes. version, uh, and that impacts things like speed and their armor rating. So you you really start getting to customize those vehicles yeah. to fit a role within uh, within your army. And then you look at, and obviously, like Mantic hasn't said anything about it, but you look at the go- Goblin Stump Bot. Mm-hmm. It's pack is resin. Yeah. Its new weapons are all resin. So that's an STL that's a very potential to be printed off. You know what would be another really great one? The burst laser for striders. That big old metal that beast? That big old metal thing <laughs> that just makes the <laughs> model tip makes, over. Makes the model tip over and break your toe. Yes. Uh, I have one. <laughs> yes. Because it's huge. Yeah. And and even, um, you know, even, even to a certain extent, the Ajax strider yes. kits, because those um, were all metal. And yep, that, that was it's all just, metal. Like, it looks awesome. It does. But it is... It's a un- scary beast. It's a scary, unwieldy <laughs> thing because because it is so heavy. Like, it, you have to really have it secured in in that model. Like, if you drop the Burst Lager, it's going to break your toe. Yeah. If you drop the Ajax Strider, <laughs> it's going to pierce your toe. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need stitches for that. Yeah. But uh, so it, you know, the vault is is a very exciting evolution. Yes, for, it super is for Mantic's uh, lineup in general. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's something we've we've really talked about, it and we're looking forward to. Uh, in Mantic, it's great to see that they're they're willing to take that step uh, and because it is it's a it's a change. It, so, and you look at it, you look from a gaming mm. company yeah. point of view, like. So Privateer Press took Mark IV and went all resin. Right. Not STLs. They went to an all resin cast for printing Mark IV for everybody. Right. Uh, Mantic has jumped on and said, no, we're going to give you STLs. And they're really the first game company to say, yeah, let's do STLs. Yeah. Uh, So it kind of opens the door for the gaming hobby environment across the board. Mm-hmm. And Mantic's at the forefront, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a really exciting position for them to be. Yes, it really is. And uh, and then they, I will say too, like they've, I feel like they've done a really nice job of uh, kind of educating people on the process of, like, yeah. Part of it is like, you know, why are we making this pivot? Uh, and also, like, why are why is you know these upgrade kits? Why are they so expensive? Yeah. And it really kind of goes to show that. You know, they are ultimately, they want people to play these games with the models that they've designed. Yes. Um, and so if they can get them to you. Anyway. In, anyway. <laughs> any way that's possible. Like, they'll they'll still do those upgrade kits. But, yeah. But they are that, that premium price. You just, it's the it's the nature of the beast because it, it just yeah. costs so much um, well, and it's, to do. And if you, look, if you look at the games across the board right now, from fantasy to sci-fi, Mantic has a great line. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're improving every day. I swear, <laughs> every release is a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you have all these armies in Kings of War that you have to pay and pay and pay just so you can have that one regiment. Mm-hmm. Now with the vault, all you do is buy the regiment once, right? And you can get the those kid. upgrade pieces, specifically like for the halflings right now. Yeah, yeah. You can build that upgraded unit that you want now mm-hmm. for a very small amount of money. Yeah, I think it's awesome. No, um, and, and and I, it it's some people might think that kind of counterintuitive. Like, well, now we'll just people will just get those STLs and and they'll never buy the the models again. But like oh, you no. like you were just yeah. saying, like it becomes much more reasonable and affordable to go. Okay, I'm going to get the core set that I need, yep. the sprues, which are very affordable for Mantic oh, yeah. to produce and sell. Uh, and then you you kind of either either you print it yourself or you have that that trusty friend. <laughs> <laughs> that buddy. That, that buddy that's got the resin printer. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you go to town. And um, so it, it's, uh, I, I think it's going to be a big boom for, for Mantic going forward. And I, I, I think I, it really is too. I'm really excited to see what other kind of unique goodies we it, get out of it. And it, it's funny because Clive Stone just posted, what do you think is going to be in June's? What, what did you think I posted? Rebs. 
<laughs> go Revs. <laughs> which, which is funny that actually you say that, and we talk about it like that's actually potentially a real thing. No, yeah, absolutely. Because you have, and and obviously we don't know the back end of it, right? But all a Star Saga, I believe they have. They've got to have the three D sculpts of those. Yeah, I'm pretty. They, they because at Star Saga they started doing the digital. Yeah, they started doing all that stuff. So mm-hmm. all of those revs can now port over mm-hmm. and be printed in that via STLs and. You rebs people will have your rebs. <laughs> Can you imagine? So oh, that, or Kalishi. The Kalishi. <laughs> well, like think think about like the the reb line you just mentioned yes. in in Star Saga. Like you have the Sphere Hunters. Yep. You have the um, the the Rin. Uh, it's just Rin, so, I think. Yeah, it's, it's cause just it's Rin. Rin Nomad. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, didn't you have the? Aren't the Sorox in there? Yep, they have the Sorax sword yeah. spawns. Yeah. Um, and then you have uh, the, the Alpha Simeons. <laughs> yep. But those were all like like plastic molds. Yes. Can you imagine how cool those things will look in resin? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there, there is the, a little bit of loss of fidelity in the design. Yeah. You can, you can see it in, in that casting. Um, Don't necessarily quote me on this, but if they start releasing revs as STLs, I might end up doing revs. <laughs> <laughs> After I finish my Asterians. Yeah. Or so, Matsudon. So, whatever they are. So we're we're really <laughs> we're hyping this up because like it, it it's, There's so much to it. There's so much to it. There's so much that can be done and hopefully, you know, this is it's that sad thing we have to wait a month <laughs> <laughs> yes. every time for the new stuff to come out. But, but they also made it known that They've already got a few months set. Yeah, they've got they've got the roadmap. So they're together. not like firing from the hip going, what do we do? What do we do? No, right. like, no they've got a game plan set out for this, and, which is awesome. And and it it makes total sense like it it, it can be something you when you've got the supply <laughs> of of those STLs, it's yes. you just kind of roll it out as, you know, all right, we're going to do you know, three models from this faction this and month. And a model from this one. Yeah, and, one yeah. I mean, I mean that's what we got. Oh my god! Did we get three sci-fi models? Nameless. Nameless will be crazy. Nameless, we're all in Star Saga. Nameless, we're all in Star Saga. The the and then Veerman. the resin, on the Veerman, the uh, shockers. Yeah, the oh. um, bolt chasers. Bolt chasers. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! There's so <laughs> much, there's so much that could possibly be. Like it's funny because I I commented on that post and a couple things I was like oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah, and now that we're sitting here talking about it, I'm like. No, oh, they did this. Oh, they did this. <laughs> the the possibilities are Endless. are pretty exciting. Yes. Um, and and like you're saying, all the mercenaries themselves, yeah, uh, would be really sweet to have. Oh yeah. Uh, and and two. So one of the other ones that's it's been talked about a lot uh, that's that's come up following this, Dreadball. Yes. Uh, we we love this game, and even though Brian always beats me, I mean. Because I suck at Dreadball. It's a good reason to love the game. Uh, <laughs> the only time I've ever won the game was when we were playing uh, Ultimate. Maybe, yeah. I think that's the only time I've ever won Dreadball. <laughs> it's it's always fun when I play Ultimate because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't make a big show of like my actions and stuff, and people kind of forget that forget I'm forget you're there, and, even though you keep scoring almost then, every turn. Right, and then just like, I got guys, I won. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I have to be sneaky about it. We played the game in an hour with six people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, Brian and, won, guys. You've seen me, you love me, you know you want me. Here you're listening to Dead Zone the Podcast with Rick and Brian. Don't turn that dial or I'm coming for you. Anyway, we tangent. <laughs> uh, Dreadball. Yeah. There's, there is a a really big opportunity, or at least a opportu- an opportunity. There's an opportunity. To breathe a little extra life into it. Yes. Because um, it, it, it has been that thing. We haven't had any new content since uh, Magnetar. Yep. Uh, which is 2021. 
one. Is that when that came out? I think it was 2020. Was it 2020? It was a while ago. We'll look it up in post. Sure. I, I, I and won't. We'll It'll... still leave this in here. Yeah, I'm leaving it but in here. But it's been a bit. And, I gotta look. <laughs> and it's not necessarily that Dreadball is a dead game. There's still right. people, like, in fact, we were just talking about it. Like, the Facebook groups have had, like, this resurgence in playing. Mm-hmm. And people are going back to Dreadball. Which I think is that opportunity for Mantic to say, hey, let's give them something. Absolutely. Um, and whether that's resculpts of old teams. Oh, you're right. 2021. Which you, com- <laughs> which you can completely do. Or some of the newer stuff. Because um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if with second edition Dreadball that those were 3D digital. The And the, I don't the, know. but Yeah, I, from, from what I've heard, because I've, I've got, you know, we, we know yeah. a couple of people that are, are closer to... Um, the, the, the in the inside <laughs> of, of Dreadball, um, you know, from what I've heard, the the second edition models, so the Neobots, um, Matsudan, the Matsudan, the Yindage, and uh, the Cyborgs. Yep. Um, like all of those, uh, I believe, was the transition to 3D. Oh my god, Cyborgs! The Cyborgs from, from Firefight. <laughs> oh, so. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, and yeah, it's uh, it was at least a news post in 2021, yeah. January of 2021. Yeah. So that's that's why it's like it's right on it's the right point. on the point. Yeah. Um, and uh, but love Magnetar Circuit. Um, yeah. And uh, so so that lends itself well to, uh, you know, it, it, there's that possibility that for and. and can't can't speak to the cost of 3D modeling. Correct. Uh, digital or otherwise. There is a cost. Uh, there is a cost to it. Uh, but you know, if if there is that concern about uh, if if you're just trying to support the game, it, there is that possibility that hey, you just put out new sculpts, just 3D yeah. 3D sculpts of uh, these models, and you release them either either in packs themselves or captains. The like team captains would be it's big. It's a simple start. Because mm-hmm. if they did an STL release of captains, just to to test the waters. Yeah. How many people are actually going after these? I mean, that's that's a really good way for Mantic to revitalize a game that they haven't done anything with. Yeah. That I, Wow. That just brought up um, Vanguard. Yeah. This is another great <laughs> opportunity. Wow. So, it, it's funny how we think of these things while we're on the podcast. <laughs> That's why I have a very light script, people. <laughs> I, I have bullet points at best. Uh, yeah, it's kind of what we do. Of things that we just need to make sure we cover. <laughs> how we get there is always an adventure. Yes. That you guys are here for, <laughs> joining us. Um, but no, yeah, it's like there's so many more opportunities now. Uh, yeah. to to help support that game. And then like you were saying, we saw a resurgence even before the vault was opened up, yeah. Was opened up of of people I'm I'm running a dreadball tournament. I'm running dreadball tournaments, um pulling out models and hey, I just finished my up. Neobots. It's and like, they, they look great. sweet. There's there's some really fun uh, people painting up their yes. their teams uh some for the first time. So it's yeah. It's really cool, and and heck, I even was trying to get my <laughs> wife to, to play dreadball with me. Uh, How'd that go? We we started a little too late in the day. Yep. And uh, we there there's a kind of an IOU. We are going to rain check. The game was called because of rain, and uh, we're going to pick it up again and and see see if she likes it. We're yeah. so there was a it was a bit of rules overview. Uh, and there, he, dreadball is not. A, a beginner's game. It it has uh, some initial kind of hurdles to get through as far as hurdles, it has a little bit of a learning, learning curve, curve. Yeah, uh, for some of its core mechanics, but once you get the hang of them, it's easy. It's it's second nature. Yeah, uh, and it, it really it's just comes down to like, okay, who gets the extra dice doing what? Yep. Uh, and then what actions do I have available to me? Yep. And it's just kind of when you understand those actions and how they counteract with one another, I mean it's it's just it's just gravy. It's dice. Yeah. It's almost like riding a bike. 
Yeah. Almost. Because I'm sure I'll fall down. <laughs> <laughs> At least once or twice. So will your players. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do when that they, a lot. When they fail that <laughs> slam check or the dash check or the pick up the buy. You know. Or just get hit by a marauder. Yeah. Or the dread ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you don't leave your guy in the I, line. I, I, I will lie. That's happened to me a bunch, so it's fun. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I we would love to see a little extra uh, love sent dread balls way. Oh, yeah. Um, at, there's definitely still an audience for it. Uh, yes. So if, if there's, you know, things things that can be done to keep that game going uh, until maybe a third edition. It's, it's that thing where... The core rules of it are so solid. You don't uh, at this really point. need a third edition. You don't quite need that third edition. Uh, so, so it is uh, that kind of thing where it's like, you know, where can where can you go from here? Yeah. Um, and and you, know, you got so many teams already. Uh, yeah. But but again, that's something that, that can be revisited. It absolutely can. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at it, like, I mean, so Dead Zone Second Edition. Mm-hmm. We didn't think we needed a third edition. True. We didn't think like true. Why are we doing a third edition? Second edition is great. Sure, everything's in multiple different books, but yeah, we get over that. <laughs> and then third Wait, edition. We've comes learned. In, yeah, <laughs> and then third edition came out, and it's like holy cow. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's nice it, to have everything it's in one book. Nice to have everything in the same place. It's nice for the newer rules um, that made sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the li- line of sight rules. The Extra die roll that you get from the command dice is yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, because I'm gonna take complete advantage of that with my <laughs> Mazadon because my splat is useless. <laughs> but it, Kings of War is the same thing. Mm-hmm. Where 2.5, 3.5, wherever whatever version they're in, like right now it's the red book mm-hmm. that has everything in it. We didn't know we needed that. Right. Now that we have it, it's like, oh, that's yeah, pretty and, sweet. And of course, with the companion, you have all of it. Right, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's been some really great things, uh, some great mo- movement at uh, at yes. Mantic. Uh, I think this is going to be. I really hope it's going to be a, a big success for them because I, I, it, it only leads to bigger and better things yes. uh, for the players and for the company. Yes, and it, it's actually really cool with the vault. Like they're being very active in the community. Mm-hmm. Yes, which is, it's just showing that like they want this to succeed and they want our input. It, it is kind of that funny thing where everyone else like, like everyone's got the the videos and and the podcast <laughs> and everything. Like like Counter Charge went and recorded like right yep. away after it was announced. And I'm like, guys, our episode cycle comes out on the twenty eighth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a thing. But. At least, <laughs> at least it was announced before we recorded. I know, right? It's not being announced this week. Yes. <laughs> you guys don't understand how many times that's happened to us. Every before, single time. Where it only works out that we record this day, and then the announcement happens at the end of the week. <laughs> I I felt glad that at least we got some pictures out first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, the, yeah, you, you went, <laughs> you started printing it. Like, as soon, like, the clock was still counting down. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, obviously, as Pathfinders, they wanted us to look at the website to make sure it was good. Yeah, to um, give it a, a quick once-over, make sure if there's any. Quick once-over to make sure everything downloads and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, so I had had injections, spinal injections that day, so I couldn't go to work. So I'm sitting at, at home, semi-high, <laughs> flipping through Facebook, and I saw it, and I'm like, he was saying Wait, we hi can... because he has a second floor to his house. Oh, yeah, completely. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's where you would go when you have a spinal, <laughs> spinal injection. <laughs> yeah. And I saw it post, and I'm like, wait a second. And I, I text uh, Clive, and I was like, can we start? Can we post <laughs> pictures as soon as the video goes live? And he's like, oh, yeah, go for it. And I'm like, sweet, I need to be back there. <laughs> so I ran back to the printer and like, <laughs> went to town <laughs> don't lay, downloading, and I'm like, Okay, we've got to have 901. We've got to have yeah. the goblins. Yeah, um, you filled that build plate. <laughs> actually, I could have put so much more on that. I really could have. Uh, in It's funny because, like, okay, right now, they're not pre-supported. Correct, yeah. But it did not take very long. Mm-hmm. for Because I use, what is that I use? You use Cura for the slicing. Yeah, and I, it pre-supports. 
Yeah, you have. You the just click the pre-support and you flip them over and you're like, okay, a, a couple more here and a couple more there, and you're done. Mm -hmm. For the most part, sometimes yeah. with models you have to go in and yeah. get pretty detailed, but it doesn't take that long to do it. And I think part of that, the only reason I put what I put on the build plate was because I didn't know mm -hmm. um, how quickly it would turn around and if I was going to have any fails or not. So I just did that small amount, which realistically, if I moved everything around from that picture, I probably could have put twice as much on there. <laughs> you get kind of crazy when you're looking at your printer. It's like, yeah, mm, you're the, the Humblewood stuff we talked about. That was one build plate. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was all of them. Guys, there. I, I asked him to print, like, a lot. Like, there was at least 15 models, yeah, I think. 15, 20, something like that. I don't know. Awesome. I, <laughs> but the 901 and the mm. Medic were on that build plate. Oh, on that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just filled it up. Yeah. I, and I've, I've seen people with resin printers actually do double layers. Oh. I have not... Bothered experimenting with that because I, I think that's nuts. I can see because they see put how the, it could be done, but yeah, yeah, I mean it's all about putting the supports on the bottom and then putting supports on top. Right, right. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not that guy. That's ambitious. I'm a plug and play guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. But uh, well, but yeah, it was super exciting getting those pictures. So I'm like, because this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, it's kind of also worth noting. Uh, this is actually how Mantic is is putting out the official terrain for. Armada. Armada, yeah. Because um, because before we didn't have official uh, official like islands physical. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So you've got a beach. Yep. A, a sandbar. A mountain range. Yep. And then two other mountains. Yeah. Kind of things. Um, I've print two sets so far. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I, they're there. <laughs> I did I did two sandbars, but it. I've, I've, How did it look on the? I neglected to put a brim. On them, so I did have a little bit of curling. Okay. Because um, I I was experimenting with some other printing. Sure. Because uh, that's what we do. That I could get away with without <laughs> having the the skirt and stuff on it. Yeah. Uh. So so it had a little bit of curling, but like otherwise, they look great. Uh, I should have brought them today. But <laughs> <laughs> I had so I, I brought a lot of three D printed stuff. Yeah, there was a lot going on today. We we're, we've exchanged a lot of three D <laughs> stuff today. Uh, so I think I think that might actually be a good segue to bring us into uh, the hobby tape. This Dead Zone, the podcast hobby table, is sponsored by Corvus Games Terrain. 3D printer files for all your Mantic games. The hobby table. What do we got going on in the hobby table? Because <laughs> that's what we've been talking yeah, about this yeah. whole time. So, But really, uh, so our hobby section is brought to you, us, or brought to you by Corvus Games Terrain. Yep. Um, and Brian has a whole bunch of it on the table. So one thing with, with, with my house... <laughs> Is that as as with I think a lot of people is that my my kind of hobby painting area is in our basement, and then um, my wife likes to spend time up at, upstairs, and uh, in in the you know the the spirit of trying to be a, a good spouse and spend time <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, time together, uh, I I just kind of kept running into that thing where it's like I want to work on. Uh, you know, painting things, or in some cases, I had to work on painting things. Uh, but I, but I, you know, didn't really like the idea of like bringing like a whole mess of stuff up and down a staircase that I'm just kind of holding jars of paint and <laughs> bottles and yep. stuff and brushes. And so, Corvus Games Terrain, uh, one of their one of his previous Kickstarters was this thing called Paint Pal. Now, his current Kickstarter, which we've we've mentioned talked about on the show. Yeah. is kind of the next evolution, which is a, a big hobby paint rack uh, set. That it, and it's even more than just that. Um, but the original Paint Pal, like the whole idea was that this is a, a portable. portable transport kit for your painting mini needs. Yes. Your mini painting needs. <laughs> and uh, and you, you, can, you can go on to his online store and, and purchase it. Yep. I kind of go through... Uh, a separate page. Uh, it's not in his 
official Notes store. bundles. Yeah, it's in his yeah. kind of bundles Kickstarter section. But you purchase it, you get the entire <laughs> And there's so Kickstarter many options. <laughs> we kid you not, there there's over a hundred options for combinations of things. So so to to put it in perspective, paint a picture a little bit, uh, you basically you have different uh, trays that you then print for your container. Yeah. Uh, you have a lid, goes off nice and top, and then you can do a little mini carrying case for like minis. Yep. Uh, you can get one that has like a spot for brushes. You can have paint a pots, wet palette. a wet palette, a dry palette. <laughs> I, uh, so many options. And and you know there's there's a lot of options for uh, different sized paint. Uh, yes. Tools. So, like, they're you. So, what we have right in front of us. Yeah. I, Brian took some pictures. So, what all is in yours? So, what's in mine is obviously the lid, uh, and then I went with a, um, a a they had a vertical separated mm-hmm. uh, kind of storage tray. Yep. Uh, and basically, you can print inserts then to divide, so you can have a bunch of dividers uh, within that tray. Yeah. Uh, and then I did I did a wet palette because. Uh, you don't have I don't, one. I don't have a good one. <laughs> uh, but and I will say though, the wet palette's really nice. Basically, it has a space you put in your your sponge or your in my case wet paper towel. Yep. You have uh, you put in your parchment paper or wax paper, and then you have a little printed insert that sits on top of that to keep it, keep in, it all place. in place. And uh, and it fits nice <clears> and snug. Uh, I can put a tray on top and close it. Yep. And uh, as as long as I'm don't, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, as long as I got that nice and level um, in the paint tray, like it doesn't come off on the top of yeah. it. Uh, and then I do have a, uh, there, there's there's one that's kind of a, for shades, uh, little yeah. little pools uh, set up there. And then I have just a very, <laughs> a very deep uh, multi-paint uh, tray that has both bottles and pots. Uh, yes, for, because for like you have a lot paints. of the contrast paints and then yeah. the army painter paints in yeah. yours. And, um, and then you have a really cool lid on yours. I did. Uh, he had a, a special lid uh, that he had designed for, for one of the uh, just kind of extra things. Yeah. Uh, kind of designed to be a dry brush testing spa- <laughs> space. Yep. So it has a whole bunch of different designs and shapes and stuff. And so you can you can get that, that first dry brush layer off. Yeah. Uh, before you start applying it to a model, which, which is I really cool. which I, which is really cool, uh, and I actually I started, um, you know I, I I printed all that up. It takes it takes a little bit because uh, some of these are, yes. are pretty beefy. It's it's bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay. Like yeah. not in a bad way. It's it's about the size of a tablet in like. Uh, it's a pretty much a seven inch tablet. Yeah, and it's about a seven inch tablet, and then obviously the height is based on. How big? How many? How many trays you put into yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so, so this one, you know, mine probably sits what, like, thirteen? Not a little, no. a little under a foot. A little under a foot. Maybe ten inches. And mine is mine is slightly smaller than yours. Yeah. Because so I have the basic top. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Which I have, also looks nice. <laughs> yes. And then I have a small storage unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a bigger bottom piece than yours because of, you printed mine for Monument Hobby Paint. Yes. And there's an insert that goes in there that yeah. fits nice and snugly for mm-hmm. all my monument hobby paints that I'm going to take. Um, I think they're gorgeous. They, it really is. And I really wish I would have had this this weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we went up to the in-laws for <laughs> right, right, uh, exactly. Mother's Day, and I'm like, that thing would have been perfect today. Exactly. And and I mean, I like for my part, like I, I used mine. Uh, I, I, I decided I was going to start doing my Rebs repaint yeah. project. Uh, and I'm starting with a the Rebs Engineer, which I have as the Dreadball <laughs> Mini. Yep. Of of um, oh gosh, what the heck is, is her name in Dreadball? I don't. Uh, she she's the Mechanite. She's Ripley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's Ripley. Yeah, it, it's it's the the one that's in the power armor, and yeah. the name escapes me, but I I do know it. Uh, she's a, part of the Mechanite robot. Uh, she's uh, their captain, right? Captain, yeah, yeah. and um. And I, it's it's perfect for the engineer, yes, uh, character because it's it's a it's a person She's in a big, <laughs> big old mech suit, um, and so uh, but yeah, I, I brought the kid up. I said, you know, my wife's watching Critical Role. I'm sitting there on the on the couch, and I just start painting. And I like the only 
kind of extra accessories I had was a cup for water. Yeah. Um, and then a couple little layers of paper towel. Uh, yep. But I could actually paint on top of one of these trays. So I didn't have to have like cardboard on, yeah. on top of that as well. Which is sweet. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I kind of like how the mini's been turning out. It's, the other cool thing about the PayPal is mm-hmm. with his new Kickstarter that just finished. So we're yep. still waiting <laughs> eagerly to get those. Yes. Um, this fits in the storage spots. Yeah, depending on uh, the size, obviously, that you're, yes. you're working with, uh, you can get the, the trays that are elevated, uh, and you can you can slide in your paint pal so that it, it sits nice and snugly underneath your, your trays, uh, or your, your racks, I should say. And, um, and it, it just kind of really goes further to show. I don't. Further to show Rick, what? <laughs> further to show how, like, uh, cool. The, this uh, it's this how well is. can we talk while we take a picture? Yes, Rick. Rick decided right now is the time to take a <laughs> it's picture. Like right now, right now. <laughs> um, but but yeah, that that it's it's a it's a great uh, set that that's not standalone. Like it, it all kind of works towards this goal of of having a really um, excellent hobby, uh, uh, you know, area that yeah. you, that you can either take with you so or nice you can and set clean up and, it's nice yeah. and clean it's so adaptable um I, I mean even this has has an option to print off like a phone tray so that you can have your phone propped up playing something while you're hobbying yes and and you can fit it in the box <laughs> like and it travels perfect. with you <laughs> it completely perfect fit for my backpack yeah uh and and our in our case too uh, i went with the design that had uh these kind of little side Parts to for magnets. For magnets. Yes. Uh, but actually... I mean, really, you don't... Like, the it, magnets is a nice touch. The magnets is, is... But it's a nice, tight fit. Yeah, it's it's a, t- a nice, tight fit by itself. I'm probably going to do... Uh, like, there's there's spots for six magnets on each each piece. Yeah. Uh, I might do three. <laughs> uh, uh, just like, you know, it, just do like a little triangle. Yeah. I feel like that will be all that I need... Just on a couple of those ones that might be a little heavier and sure. could fall out. And, and, like, the magnets would really be good with your wet palette in there. Yes. To keep it as... Yeah, as... where I don't have the wet palette, I don't think I'll probably use them at all. Yeah. At least this time. We'll see. Yeah. But, uh, so, so really excellent kit. Uh, if, you, if you've ever kind of had that, it, it kind of similar to my situation where, you know, you... You're trying to balance that time with family and, yep. and balance that time with your hobby. Uh, this is a pretty cool solution. It's perfect for travel. And it's, I, I yeah. mean, think about it. So, like, obviously, at Adepticon, we don't play. We yeah. run tournaments. Mm-hmm. But if you were a player at Adepticon and you didn't know if something was going to happen in travel. Because mm-hmm. uh, I know, like, one year, Tyler Schultz, he painted an entire unit, I think. Yeah. At Adepticon. Didn't Nick do that Nick, too? <laughs> Nick does that every year. Like he he literally won't decide until that night what he's painting and he paints an entire army. So so you can have it for those paint emergencies. Yes. Or even better, you can have it for the, the post celebration. I just bought something new and I want to paint it right away. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people you, do that. You just have your you could bring that to a painting class. Yes. A hundred percent. Like that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I really like it, and and I definitely recommend if if you've been looking to to try and make your hobby space more mobile, this is this a is perfect. excellent solution. Yep. Uh, so so thank you, Corvus Games Terrain. Yes, for, definitely. For designing something that's so cool. Yes. This month's Corvus Games Terrain fifteen percent off coupon code is DZ Podcast May. Kevin Riddle, and you're listening to Dead Zone the Podcast. That's right, Riddle. Not Reed Lay, not Reed La, not Rydell, not Riddell. Riddle. Just like it's spelled. 
Um, so some of the other things on the table. You said something about repainting your rims. Yeah. So, so what do you got going on over there? So as I said, uh, starting with my um, just just my engineer unit, uh, and and part of this is also like my goal is to spend a little bit more time yeah. on on each model as I okay. go. Um, cause so I, did you strip them or are you just? I have extras. Oh, <laughs> of course you do. I because uh, oh yeah, I don't I, have any reps. Never I, mind. I, I apologize if it sounds like I've been hoarding Reb starter kits. You have. I have a lot of you Reb started, models. Like, I started early. You started early. <laughs> and then, like, because when you started, Reb sucked. Yeah. Rebs, <laughs> base second edition Rebs were not the greatest. No, to they play really with. weren't. But you just, you jumped in. I stuck with it. You stuck with it. And, and now nobody else can buy Rebs because Brian has them all. <laughs> Maybe maybe we'll throw that into our, our later uh, yeah, contest thing that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, so so part of this is is my goal is to uh, so the Rebs were the fa- first models that I painted for Dead yes. Zone when I got into it, and it was with Meyer Bots, <laughs> uh, you know, craft paint. Yep, the craft hobby paints. The craft hobby paints, which they served their purpose at the yes, time. Yes, they did, and they're still great paints for scenery. Yeah, yeah. They really are. Yeah, as as I learned uh, <laughs> doing Adepticon terrain prep, you yes. don't need to spe- you don't need to put your nice expensive model paints to work uh, no, when you're you just really don't. painting up the same box for the eighth <laughs> time. Um, but but the, so so you know I, I've I've got this kind of uh, design aesthetic that I had for my Rebs force and with the evolution that's my my stories have kind of gone through yes. where I have I now have a cast of characters that can fit into really a 175 do. point list. Ooh. Yeah. Um I'm like I want to have these models to be put on the table yeah. and not be like okay. It, it makes I, sense. I'm here to play Rebs and I'm going to win so <laughs> hard that you won't notice how terrible the paint job is. Uh <laughs> Or, or I'm gonna fail so hard you won't notice the paint job. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah. So, so that's my goal is to just take a little bit more time, uh, you know, and bring on those techniques that I've I've learned, learned over, over the years. Over yeah. the years. And uh, so I'm starting with the the engineer and really kind of making them characters as yeah. opposed to just models that's in an, in an army. Uh, so, so I've and, and I kind of like did the math. Because I had done some of those Star Sager, yep, Star Sager, Sar- ones, <laughs> Sarger. Uh, that kind of fit uh, a number of of the the minis that that I kind of have in my roster that I'm looking to paint. Is up. that going to be the name of this episode? <laughs> Star Sager, <laughs> Star Star Sager. <laughs> um, maybe <laughs> we'll see if it makes it in post. Yeah. Uh, but the 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 goal then is like, okay, I want to redo a, a handful of Reb Troopers. Yep. Because I think I was looking for about three of them, um, and and Something I now right. have you know they there's the the grenade reb, yeah, uh, one that that serves for the kind of the female, uh, one of the female kind of troopers that I had yeah. in my my story, um, so the the only one I'm kind of stuck on that I I need to figure out how I want to do, is uh, the reb sniper because I am using the reb commander unit as yeah, uh, which is usually the stand in for the sniper position. Uh, is is my my leader, um, my main character for my story. So the the sniper is one I'm gonna try to figure out. Uh, originally, like I I kind of have these models already. Yeah. Said I had an infinity model that that fit yep. the design that I was going for. Uh, so I'll see if I can find uh, something in the Mantic line to maybe kit bash. Uh, kit bash to, and take one of the GCPS sniper rifles and put it on the back. Yeah. Or or the. Uh, <laughs> Maybe give them the the bigger uh, enforcer sniper, <laughs> the enforcer rifle, sniper just, rifle, or maybe the the goblet sniper rifle. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> but um, but yeah, so so that's that's kind of my goal. I, I really only have about five models okay. that that I I'm kind of looking to do this this facelift on. Yeah, and um, and so I'm I'm you know I'm gonna kind of kind of get on that that hobby train while yeah. I'm, while I'm feeling the that energy flowing yep uh, cuz it, it kind of stinks when you just don't have the ambition to paint it yeah um but then I know I, that feeling then I I 
because I've been I've been playing a lot of GCPS and Maison Labs. Yes, you have actually for, for yeah. quite a while. My reps haven't seen the field for, for oh, darn. some time. Oh darn! So it would be fun to to kind of bring them back with this nice fresh <laughs> coat of paint, and uh, and just looking really really sweet. And then I've got all sorts of other uh, <laughs> projects. That so we'll have to we'll have to play. Ones. Your rebs versus my Asterians. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, how, how's that project? So going? I was in the same slump. Like I was looking for something and I didn't, nothing was grabbing me that I really mm. wanted to do. Mm. So yeah, I put out a little <laughs> thing. You, you, you took a poll. I just decided. <laughs> I did. I took a poll and I let the community decide what I'm painting. Mm. Um, and of course they picked Asterians. I tried to get rebs going for you, but. <laughs> Oh, darn. <laughs> hey, so the reason why Rebs got added that list afterwards is because I was like, oh, wait, I have all of Star Saga. I do have Rebs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Asterians won. Mm. And of course, like, so I got rid of pretty much all of my Asterians because Nick yeah, was getting into Nick a getting firefight, firefight. And so he got all of my Asterians except for my Matsudon. Yeah. So I made 175 point. Matsudon Asterian list. Now nice. my splat is useless because <laughs> you don't have any marionettes. Right? I don't have no. It is a hundred percent Matsudon. Mm -hmm. I had to do one kit bash because um, you got. I needed three troops at least, mm -hmm. um, and I only had two of the actual resin ones. So gotcha. I kit bash one of the other resin models with a shock trooper baton. <laughs> See, I still have some revs. <laughs> The metal one? The metal one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that's the one that's finished that I posted. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the shock troopers baton. <laughs> wow. I it was there. I'm like, I need a mantic weapon that looks like mm -hmm. theirs. And it's like that one's close it, enough. It's pretty fitting. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on it. I obviously I finished the one model. Yeah. Um I liked how it turned it out. So I did I'm too. Gonna, I'm gonna do that same skin tone over the rest of the troops. And yeah. I think that's the big thing is I'm going to use that skin tone, different colors to signify each of the units mm -hmm. uh, and give them a little bit more character. Um, and then we finally got a Dead Zone game on our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, Michael, one of our good friends of the show, mm -hmm. came over and we played a little 150-point game of nice. Dead Zone. It was, it was nice to get back into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was Forge Fathers versus... Was it Marauders? Yeah. Probably. Um, I was not playing Marauders. It felt really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played the Forge Fathers. Um, I took a Brockers list. But it was one of those I looked over in the cabinet. I'm like, oh, all my Brockers are painted. I'll take them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a nice paint job on those Brockers, too. Thank you. Um, so your Iron-Blooded Orphan one, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, and then, so one of the other things from a hobby standpoint I wanted to shout out. Yeah is over on the Facebook group. Um, so one of the groups that we've absolutely loved is Maison Labs, right? Yes. Um, whether it's Firefight or Dead Zone. Mm. It, like, the whole setup of Maison Labs is just an amazing idea for me. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Evans. Yes. His Maison Labs lab is phenomenal. You've yes. got to check it out. Yes, we will we'll post a, a couple pictures. Yes, um, but and, and at least a link to the post that he's got. Yeah, because um, yeah, the color details inside the buildings. I, I mean, the whole thing like it, it looks like a living lab. It looks like a living lab. It looks like it's lit, it even really though does. it is not. <laughs> <laughs> like like uh, the it, purple colors that he has in the one room and the, the green. The white and the red, yes. like the, the 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 lobby area. <laughs> yeah, I just pulled up the lobby area and I was like, "Oh wait, it's... like you can actually tell." Like, if you were to look at it from a present day thing, you would swear to God that it's got Coke and Sprite and Mountain Dew, mm -hmm. and over in that one, there's some Doritos and Cheetos. And <laughs> and I, I and I I, I don't recall uh, completely, but I think that's almost almost a hundred percent Mantic, if not. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's absolutely stunning and shows off so gorgeous. what you can do with Mantic's terrain. Yes. Uh, I, I, I remember him kind of slowly posting some of the, the, the project. Uh, as and it, it was, was very going. light. Like, yeah. It was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, that's going to be a cool centerpiece. And mm -hmm. then he showed off everything. And I'm like, 
Wow. And it, and it is like multi level. It's like yes. at least two. It's least two three stories, stories, I think. Yeah, I think so when it's all told. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It, it just looks so cool. Yes. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so to kind of bring it, uh, you know, kind of speaking to the community side of things. Yes. Uh, we're coming up on a, a pretty big landmark for the podcast. We are? Yes. In June. In June. Wait, what's going on in June? Ten year anniversary. Ten, ten year, <laughs> I, for some reason, I had like a hundred episodes. I'm like, that's not, every, no, that's a, we're already at 140. I'm like, where did I get that? So like ten year yes, anniversary. Ten year of the anniversary. Podcast. So Rob and Jack started this ten years ago. Yes. Uh, we took it over three and a half years. Is that where we're at? Something like three and a half years. years. Yeah. I don't know. Math is um, hard when it's not whole numbers. It has been a blast. Recording these episodes, mm-hmm. one with you, Brian, yeah. and and of course, and same to you. <laughs> shouting out to all the fans because I mean, really, we do this because we love the games. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love what Mantic has given us as far as a product with Dead Zone, uh, with Dreadball, with Firefight. I mean, both of us, even Kings of War, yeah, <laughs> and Armada. Like everything <laughs> Mantic has done has been for me. It was literally what got me into minis. Yeah, like. You being at my first demo, I mean, the whole thing. It, it got me back into it. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a much more affordable game space than, <laughs> yes. than I had previously attended. And then, of course, Rob and Jack mm. saying, okay, we're done. By the way, you two are doing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, 10-year anniversary. And with that, we want to give back to the community uh, a little more. Yes. Uh, because... We wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Uh, yep, 100%. Uh, <laughs> and and we really appreciate it. So what we have is a little a little contest, a little drawing, if you will. We're going to... Ooh. We're, and this is the first of probably more that we're going to be doing yes. in the future. Uh, oh, yeah. Because we, we, we love this aspect of, of the show and the community. This is what makes what we do so much fun is yeah. the community. Yeah. So... Uh, what we we like to do is we're going to be posting about uh, this drawing, this contest that we're going to have for our 10-year anniversary. Which is funny because we're going to actually post that, and then this episode's going to come out. <laughs> yeah, because we, we kind of need, we want to have it out there. Uh, so if you yes. haven't tracked this down, we'll probably reshare ourselves. Oh, yeah. Um, a little bit to, to bring it back up. Because we're just like Ghost of Mars. We don't have a timeline. No. <laughs> we're better than Ghost of Mars. <laughs> We're not the worst movie ever made. It's not the worst movie. <laughs> so. It's just a train trip. What, uh, what we'd like you guys to do is um, we're, we're going to have this post, and we'd like you to post a picture of a model uh, from the Warpath universe that you've got. Yep. Uh, in, in the comments below. And if you do that, you get entered into this contest. In addition, if you like the post, you get another entry into the, the drawing. If you share the post, uh, please do so publicly because we want to be able to, to track it. Be able to track it, yeah. Um, the, so that's all just on Facebook. That's just on Facebook. So that's three yep. that you can get from Facebook. Twitter, going to be pretty similar. Uh, so we're going to be on there as well. So you can, if you uh, comment with a picture, if you uh, like the post, and if you uh, retweet or quote like, retweet. Like, share, comment. Like, uh, share, comment. Like, share, comment. Uh, you know, each each one of those is going to get you entered into this uh, this contest for for a number Something. of entries, and uh, and we have we have some pretty pretty strong goodies, and one of which I'm I'm cool spoiling right now, is the the new Dead Zone two player starter set with the plague and the Asterians. Oh, that's such a sweet starter. Yeah, plus some other goodies that we're planning to to probably throw out there. So, because it, it's it's ten years, we gotta ten make years, it. It's huge. It's, it's huge. Uh, so do that. You know, hit us up on the social medias. Basically, if you reach out to us on any of those platforms that we exist, you you add us. You know, whatever. Yep. Uh, you mention us in some way. We will add you to the the contest, and uh, we're going to be doing the drawing for it live as we record <laughs> for the episode. Um, yeah, we'll try. We'll probably do. We might do uh, that section actually live. Yeah, we'll do it live on probably our YouTube. Yep. Um, right here in Thunderforce Studios, yep. uh, as we're recording that episode. Yeah, as we record the episode. 
because uh, we're, we're very professional <laughs> when we do that. Uh, Rick will be standing over there, and I'll have a little <laughs> computer that's, that randomizes this. It'll I'll work. Throw, put it all in a hat or something. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited, uh, you know, and this, this would be a great way for you to kind of get engaged with the community. Uh, we've seen a huge uptick in uh, listeners, and yes. we absolutely are so happy to see that and want to give back to you guys in some way. So uh, if you help spread that word of the show and, and uh, you know, we've got, we got some stuff yeah. that you can, you can win and, and you can, in your own way, join us on, on the 10th anniversary <laughs> of Dead Zone, the podcast. So crazy that we've been the, the podcast has been going for ten years. I mean, yeah. we've been doing it for three and a half years. Yeah, it's still kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's moved at a good clip, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with with that, uh, we're 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 that's, bad that, that's not a bad that's not a bad spot. That's not, not a, a bad, bad spot. spot to <laughs> to stop for the night as as. Uh, some Lex Dexia kicks in. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but yeah, so so like and, and subscribe to the show wherever you, you find us. We're, all the social media. We're on all these social media platforms, and we'd love to hear from you guys. Yes. We're, we're really excited to see, you know, what minis you guys share with us because, uh, you know, the more Rebs, I, 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 think we, I can't, you uh, the Rebs, can't man. guarantee it. We get two mm-hmm. entries. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, get yeah, some yeah, Reb yeah, miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot confirm it. I <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what the community kind of brings forth, and, yes, and it definitely. can be it can be it can be buildings and terrain like the the yeah. one we just talked about. Well, it, I mean, you think about it. So it's the Warpath universe. It's so the Warpath it's, universe. Uh, Dread Dead Ball. Zone, Dreadball, Star Firefight, Saga. Star Saga. I know I kept rattling them off as you were rattling some off. Because rattle, rattle, rattle. Yeah. And that's, scenery. That's how we do. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so I wonder if Rob's gonna post on there like a Hellboy, <laughs> just <Rob>. because. <laughs> Warpath, Rob. Oh, Warpath. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for, for listening to the episode. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see you we'll guys see you next online. month. Bye. Bye. I guess that's how we're ending it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. Do you know what I didn't talk about? What? The little 3D printing stuff that I'm, I'm toying with. Oh, yeah, with your Dreadball stuff. Yeah, so so those that listen to the end to the very are going to get end, a little extra end. here. So one of the things I've been playing around with is I finally kind of bit the bullet and go, you know what, I'm just going to hop on this Tinkercad thing and figure out what's what it is. So Tinkercad is free, right? Tinkercad is free. It's it's linked to Thingiverse. Oh, that's uh, convenient. So like, uh, it's a, like the same parent company. You can actually send your models from Tinkercad to Thingiverse. Oh. Um, with that, uh, with all the talk about Dreadball and stuff, I'm like, okay, I want to make some something for Targets. Dreadball. Uh, I've so, some people, especially with the ones that have been posted recently, yeah. they they've made. A little uh, strike zone targets yeah. that that kind of sit on the on the on the pitch and are just kind of elevated round circles and everything. Kind of kind of helps sell that these are targets up uh, up above as opposed to like something you're throwing at the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so. So I've decided I, I just started tinkering with it. Yeah. And as as the namesake is, and I designed basically this this 3D hoop that I can. I can either print with a little hex base itself, okay, or I I have it where it's just the hoop. I you can print it flat, yeah. and you can glue it to the back of a hex base for Dreadball. That's convenient. And you know that way it's it's kind of out of the way because you can have guys in yes. that strike zone. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and, and and ultimately like I was just playing around with it for maybe an hour and I put that together and it that's pretty cool and so much of it is just kind of tinkering with the size at this point yeah. like I want to get the scale right um, and yeah I'll be, I'll be sharing that probably uh, soon uh, for for public consumption because yeah. uh, I just want it to be I'm still again kind of tinkering with the size 
But uh, once once I'm I'm happy with it, I'm like, yeah, let's put it out there. Put it up there, and and then you're gonna do some bleachers, right? <laughs> so so yes, and uh, my next one is actually kind of this weird clamshell idea I have for a little carrying tray for your team. Oh, okay. Because uh, I was like, I'm like. I, that that's one thing that's always like transporting your dreadball team around. Transporting your dreadball team, yeah. It's really it's always really cool if you have like a little bench yes. that they're they're a part of or something. Still, the best one I ever saw was Tyler's. Tyler's was was so phenomenal. So, cool. so something something a little lighter than that flavor because <laughs> Tinker Kids a little limited um, yeah. on the shapes and stuff you can do. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 having fun playing with it and I'm I'm excited to see what I throw together in, in kind of a simple fashion. Oh, yeah. And that's why I have bullet point list notes. Because <laughs> we forget things. Yes. But we still got it in there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>